People are confused about why Fergo ratings change from day to day the way they do. And with more people getting league games in through LMS and seeing those and tournament games on the mobile app, and with a new version of the mobile app coming out soon showing a recent rating trend, we thought it would be a good idea to explain why Fargo ratings change from day to day the way they do. There are a number of things people think ought to be true that just aren't. For instance, it's common to think there ought to be a formula for the rating change. What's the formula? Well, there isn't a formula. Common to think, well, of course my rating won't change if I don't play. That's not true either. My rating has to increase if I beat better players. Yeah, no. I have to beat better players for my rating to increase. Mm, no, not that either. And this is a common one. If I win all the time, I dominate my league, I win all the tournaments, I'm in a small town, nobody beats me, my rating's just going to keep going up, there's nothing to hold it down. Mm, no, that's not the way it works. If you resonated to one or more of these, you may learn something here. First, I'll explain the there is no formula comment, because that seems kind of bizarre for a major numerical thing like what we do. Then I'll introduce three contributing factors to rating changes that actually add together to make a net change. Often what people are doing is focusing on one of these factors when the other two are in fact dominating. For those who want to understand those factors a little bit more, I'll flesh them out in a subsequent video. Here's an example of a formula that has the things that we know and love and have come to expect in a formula. It has an equal sign. It has the thing we want to calculate on your left, this month's phone bill. It has things on the right like parameters, like $29.99 flat monthly charge. It has 45 cents per minute. It has a variable, the excess minutes over 300. Um, it's reasonable for you to be interested in seeing this formula, even if you're not going to calculate it, even if it actually involved things you were not comfortable with and didn't know how to deal with. Like, let's say it involved the square root of the logarithm of excess minutes or something like that. You don't know what to do with the reason is, by seeing it, what you can see is that your phone bill doesn't depend upon the phase of the moon, and it doesn't depend upon the time of the day that you make the calls. You can see that phase of the moon and time of day are not in the formula. That's all you need to know to know that your phone bill doesn't depend upon those things. So we certainly understand the motivation behind asking for a formula for Fargo rating changes, and sometimes I think people see us as being coy or secretive or proprietary in not sharing such a formula. They imagine they're asking to see something like your new rating is your old rating plus stuff involving games won, opponent rating, games lost, opponent robustness, and so forth. And they're wondering, what's in that list of variables on the right? How does it depend upon those various things? But here's the deal. There isn't such a thing. The closest we can do is replace that equal sign with some sort of association symbol and say that your new rating depends upon everybody else's new rating, and everybody else's new rating, in turn, depends upon your new rating. This is the mathematical equivalent of the M.C. Escher painting where of the hand that's drawing the hand that's drawing the hand that's drawing it. Computing all of the new ratings that all depend upon one another simultaneously is an optimization problem, and you'll see us use that word optimization. This is the kind of problem that appears in a lot of big data machine learning type applications, People who do modern air traffic control, as one example, use the same kind of mathematics that Fargo rate uses. Okay, these three items are, I think, a useful paradigm for understanding rating changes. The first is performance. This is the one you tend to expect. There's a certain expectation for how you're going to perform based upon your current rating. If you meet it, your rating stays the same. If you exceed it, your rating goes up. If you fall short of it, your rating goes down. Focus is the system using new data to better understand you by better understanding the opponents you've already faced. The third I call tied. Many of us tend to be members of groups, clusters of players that tend to play against one another, whether they're members of the Euro Tour or women pros or players that play in Phoenix, Arizona, or members of a particular league division. New data sometimes leads to tied shifts, where, for example, everybody in Arizona tends to move up a tenth of a point relative to everybody in the Pacific Northwest. On a given day, the rating change that you see is the sum of all of these. For newer players in the system and for new areas getting games in the system, the two on the bottom can be fairly large. Furthermore, the two on the bottom happen whether you play new games or not. It's not that your skill actually changes without you playing new games. It's that our best estimate of your skill changes as we get 
more new and better evidence. This is not unlike crossing out the weight we have for your load of bananas because we've emptied the bananas off your truck and gotten a better weight of your empty truck. It's not that we've added 500 pounds of bananas to your load. So once again, rating changes that happen from day to day are somewhat complex and hard to predict because they're actually a sum of contributions from these three different sources, each of which can be positive or negative. In a separate video, I'll talk about each of these individually in a little bit more detail and when to expect them to be uh, large or small.